I'm convinced that if you don't read graphic novels, you're missing out on an entire medium, one that is genre spanning. Like there is sci-fi, there's young adult, there's history, there's mystery, there's so much. And in there, there is also fantasy, a lot of fantasy. And among the greatest fantasy graphic novels of all time is one of my personal favorites, Mouse Guard. First things first, uh, I shaved my beard. I was starting to look homeless. It's coronavirus season, you know, and uh, uh, I, I'm working from home a lot, fixing my hair less, and was growing out my facial hair just because I don't like shaving. But today's Easter. Uh, up on this recording, it is Easter Sunday, and so I thought, you know what? Let's be a human for once. So I did my hair, shaved my face, and here I am for better or worse. So let's move on to talk about what we all came here to talk about. And that is Mouse Guard. Mouse Guard is a comic book collection, a graphic novel series about medieval mice who have formed a group of warrior mice known as the Mouse Guard. And this collection of mice are set to defend their territories and to keep their borders safe from enemies. Their enemies are common predators to mice and smaller woodland creatures. So we're talking serpents and crabs and owls and just all of those normal predators. We've got a lot of protagonists here in the Mouse Guard series, a lot of mice that kind of take center stage. Not one of them is the main character that we follow, but they are all, for the most part, a part of the mouse guard. Not every mice is a part of the, a part of the mouse guard. They've got their own villages and cities. Some mice are blacksmiths. <laughs> Some mice are uh, bakers and cooks and chefs and uh, the matriarchs that kind of lead various villages. They've all got various roles. However, we follow some of the characters that are a part of the mouse guard. But each of them have unique uh, personalities and strengths and weaknesses and quirks and characteristics. They are all their individual characters and, and they're great. The, the characters are great. The story is, is fine. It's nothing to write home about. It is good. But what shines most brightly here in the Mouse Guard series is the artwork. The artwork in this series is absolutely immaculate. It is top tier, god tier level of graphic novel artwork. It is stunningly beautiful with its various shades of, of coloring and um, its style, it is, it is expertly crafted. I actually wanna show you a few of the scans as I talk a little bit further, so they're just gonna come up on the screen. Uh, but Mouse Guard, it was originally a bi-monthly comic series, and now they've been collected into three different volumes. We've got Fall 1152, Winter 1152, and Black Axe. There's also a collection of short stories called Baldwin the Brave and Other Tales, but you can see here in these images that the colors are lush and glowing. The pattern and texture are used to great effect to show depth and distance. The, the author and illustrator are one and the same. It's David Peterson and he actually sometimes streams his illustration sessions where he's creating content in the mouse guard world. I've been able to tune in even the last few nights just to watch him with some nice peaceful meditative music as he is coloring in or, or um, inking some of his different commissioned pieces. But you can really tell that he not only puts time into this project, but he also puts in an ample amount of heart as well. There is also a mini series spinoff from the Mouse Guard series, the ones that I've already mentioned called Legends of the Guard. And this is three different volumes, but what makes these volumes unique is that it is not David Peterson that does the majority of the artwork here. Uh, he has worked with and called upon auth uh, authors and illustrators that he respects and that he's friends with and asked them to uh, enter into his mouse guard world and to tell a story. And so these various illustrators, comic 
illustrators are crafting these mini stories in their own art style. That's what makes it super unique. So in volume one, you've got, I think there's maybe six or eight different small tales that are told by different authors and illustrated by different illustrators and David Peterson. And so it's this incredible collection work of art. And what's really cool, at least in the first volume that I'm reading right now, is that um, it's set up as though uh, these mice are telling stories in a bar and the best story in a, in a pub kind of, and the best story is going to have their tab completely cleared so that they don't have to pay it. So each story is being told by a different mouse. And there's only three rules, if I can remember them, of telling the story. One is that the story can't be completely true. Two is that it can't be completely false. And the third, I had to look it up, has to be a tell that hasn't been heard before. Uh, and so you've got different mice that are telling these stories. And so it makes sense that the storytelling and the art would be different as well. So there's so much great content here in the world. So we'll keep you busy for a little bit, unless you're like me who binged kind of through this entire series because it's so good and I'll give it a reread, especially because there's YouTube audio of David Peterson giving chapter by chapter or comic by comic commentary, reader commentary as, uh, as you read through. So I'm going to do that again. However, he's not done. He's working on a fourth title to the series right now called Weasel War of 1149. David Peterson is incredibly talented. This series has so much charm. And last thing to note here is that this is not um, a series for kids. Although it's anthropomorphized mice, and you would think that that makes it kid friendly while children might enjoy some of this. No, there it's about war and bloodshed and betrayal. Like there's some dark and heavy themes here. And a few of these themes might potentially go over the head of some kids or uh, be a little bit scary. That being said, any and all can appreciate the art that is held within the storytelling Man, it's just a lot of fun to enter into this mouse guard world for anyone that maybe loved Redwall or Watership Down or some of those other, I don't know, famous titles from childhood. You might really, really want to pick up Mouse Guard. But again, it's, it's for everyone. If you haven't read it yet, you definitely should. Thank you for watching another one of my videos for clicking the like button. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe and join the Dragon Army. Let me know your thoughts about Mouse Guard down below, whether or not you've read it. Does it sound interesting? And is it like something that you would want to read? And then give me your graphic novel suggestions down below. I'm always looking for a new good graphic novel to read. We'll see you in the next video.